Welcome back to the show Who Is, where we look into your favourite heroes and villains from video games, films and comics, and discuss their lore and backstory. I'm your host Dean, aka The Blue Crusader, and in today's episode we'll be looking into Illidan, the Betrayer. Illidan Stormrage, known as the Betrayer in his later life, was a night elf and the brother of famed druid Malfurion Stormrage. In his early life, Illidan practiced a form of magic wielded by the highborn elves. As a child in his youth and in adolescence, he tried his best to follow the same path as his brother Malfurion, to own his skills and try to learn the ways of the druid. However, although he wanted to be a druid, his interest lied in the pursuit of magic through sorcery. This power called him in a much greater way to the druid magic of the landed. Illidan, however, was special. He had a birth feature that even his brother did not have. He was born with a set of amber eyes, a feature revered by the night elves, one that told of a great destiny and future. Amber eyes actually brought more to the table. They indicated a sense of great potential in the druidic ways and would suggest had Illidan taken another path and destiny, he would have been a powerful druid in the end. Illidan's brother, along with his love interest to Rhonda, had already reached their potential and knew what their path was, but Illidan was held back. He had not yet found his true destiny and was still searching for the pieces to add up to find it. Although he wasn't of highborn origin, he would become the personal mage of Lord Ravencrest, the leader of the highborn military. During the first Burning Legion invasion of Azeroth, Malfurion coerced his brother into leaving Queen Ashara's presence. Illidan chose to listen to his brother and to come with him. They both believed that the battle could not be won single-handedly and that the Legion's power was too immense, even for that of Sonorius and the Aspect's dragons to deal with. Malfurion believed that the only solution to the Legion's onslaught was the personal destruction of the Well of Eternity, a pool containing immense arcane energy, one that Illidan used to gain his power from. Illidan disagreed with such a thought. He was almost appalled with the idea of it. Magic was his well-being, his passion, and to lose such a feat of strength was unthinkable. Not only was the well the source of his power, but it was likely believed to be the source of the immortality of the Night Elves. As the Legion advanced through their world, Illidan took a sick liking towards them. He still believed their chaotic nature was not welcome on Azeroth, but he developed admiration towards their raw power and potential. The Night Elves continued to battle the Legion, holding them back, but their forces seemed to be infinite, an endless invasion. Xavius pierced into Illidan's mind, gaining advantage of the situation by finding the weakness in his doubts and confusion, purposely planting elements of distrust within him. Now that his mind had been compromised, this let his guard down, and any thoughts of stopping his plans. He would seek out the Legion's power for himself, so that he could use it to make himself stronger. Although in his mind, he would convince himself that he was doing so for the greater good. Such choices would end in tragic consequences as they helped to grant Sargeras the Demon Soul, an artifact talisman that he would use to open a rift portal to attempt to enter the world. Illidan would later travel to Zin Ashari, the then Night Elf capital, to take his allegiance to Queen Ashara and the Pit Lord Manoroth. He wanted to do this in order to find the Demon Soul and take it for himself in order to close the demon portal which was letting the legion enter the world. But in order to complete such a hallowing task, he knew he needed to gain even more power. At some point, Illidan kneeled before Sargeras, who after discovering his plan to obtain the demon soul for the legion, or so he thought, was pleased. In return for such conquest, he burnt Illidan's pair of eyes, allowing him to see all magic forms and arcane tattoos covering his body. After this event, Ashara was in awe. She was intrigued, but made sure to send Captain Varathan with Illidan to find the Demon Soul, as she remained slightly cautious. Sometime after the Great Sundering, an event that reshaped the world caused by the Well of Eternity's destruction, Illidan hiked Mount Hyjal, carrying with him seven vials filled with liquid. Those vials contained water that he had saved from the well itself before its destruction. He stopped at a lake nearby, dispersing the water from his vials into it. As the water hit the lake, the energy within twisted it, turning it into a new well. As Illidan gasped in excitement, it came crashing down when his brother and Tyrande discovered his actions, horrified. Malfurion could not believe the sight of such betrayal by his brother, even trying to convince him the error of such ways. He told Illidan meddling with such magic would certainly bring about destruction and it should not be messed with. Still on a power trip, however, Illidan was void to reason, 
and ignored his brother. He told Malfiorin he planned to use this new well to pull magic from it in order to defeat the Legion if they returned. Malfiorin was disgusted with the pure foolery of his brother and made sure Illidan was imprisoned for such treachery. He was buried deep below Mount Hyjal in a prison where he could be forgotten about by the rest of his people for the next 10,000 years. Illidan rotted in despair in his prison for these years, being watched over by the warden Maeve Shadowsong and Califax, a watcher and the keeper of the grove. They would stand guard over Illidan, making sure he would not escape. It would seem though that an unexpected ally would come back to release him. Taronda killed the night elves who guarded him, not for personal reasons or to be a friend, but to seemingly use Illidan as a weapon against the Legion once more. Illidan foolishly, due to love, accepted and agreed to help, promising he would defeat them once more before going into exile. Malfurion, once finding out about his brother's release, was in disagreement. He was opposed to such a reckless choice and believed it to be a mistake. Illidan left his brother behind, leading his own people to hunt down the Legion's forces in Felwood. During his mission, he would come into contact with Arthas, who was being controlled by the Lich King. They had a showdown, clashing blades and fighting. However, they were an equal match and no one could win. Illidan ultimately ended the duel, asking for the troop behind Arthas and the Scourge's attacks and why Arthas came for him. Arthas told him to seek the skull of the warlock Gul'dan, promising that it would end the corruption of Felwood. He also foretold of the skull's immense power, and although Illidan was wary of Arthas and in distrust of him, he would eventually seek the skull for himself regardless. A demon gate prevented easy access to the artifact, and Illidan and his people had to fight through forces to gain entry to it. Illidan didn't want to stop at anything now that he knew of how much power the skull contained. He broke the demonic seal, feasting from the skull to use for himself. As he gained immense strength, it came at a price as he began to change. His body slowly changed, transforming him into a demon himself. Now with immense power, he used it to embody himself in great energy, unleashing it on the demon Tychondrius and his forces, granting him victory. As Tyrondra and Malfurion discovered the state of Illidan, they turned their back on him once more. Malfurion told his brother he had lost his soul, trading it for power, banishing him once more. Illidan, in deep despair, and let down that his sacrifices had once more gone unappreciated, disappeared from the land. When the Legion faced defeat once more, Illidan was sought out by Kildraden, a powerful Eridor demon and hand to Sargeras himself. Kildraden had been watching Illidan and knew of his betrayal in the past to the Legion and hunger for power. Nonetheless, he offered Illidan one more chance, telling him to journey to Northrend to seek out the Frozen Throne and to destroy it. This was the lair of the Lich King, a demonic presence Kil'jaeden had created, using the soul of the shaman Nazul, who had become too powerful for him to control. Illidan called out for the Naga to help him, the original servants of Ashara, who wanted to avenge themselves after being cursed after the Night Elves destroyed the well. Followed by his Naga after escaping his jailer Maeve, Illidan landed on the shores of the Broken Isles, land foretold to be the ruins of Suramar, the city where he had grown up as a boy. This location was known to be the home to the tomb of Sargeras, land Gul'dan raised years ago. Illidan's forces had attempted to destroy the boats of Maeve and her forces, who sought to imprison Illidan once more, but had failed. They arrived on the shores to follow him. Illidan clashed with Maeve, but managed to reach the tomb of Sargeras before she could follow. Illidan, after gaining the memories and knowledge of Gul'dan, after absorbing his power from the skull, used this knowledge to navigate the tomb entering a chamber containing an artifact known as the Eye of Sargeras. He took the artifact for himself. Enraged with Maeve for imprisoning him for over 10,000 years, he used it to bring the whole tomb down on her so he could escape with his Naga through the underwater passages of the structure. Although the rest of her forces were defeated, Maeve managed to escape by wielding her magic. Illidan fought her once more as Maeve sent a scout to request for backup. To no surprise, Malfurion and Tyrande arrived with more forces as Maeve was close to defeat, striking back at the Naga and defeating them. Illidan, when coming into contact with Tyrande, warned her not to interfere in such affairs to protect her, fleeing across the sea once more. She had told him why she did what she did and how his drunkenness for power pushed those close to him away. Illidan reached the lands of Lordaeron, once home to Arthas Menethil, 
He ran through the forests of Silver Pine, running to Dalaran where he could use the Eye of Sargeras once more to cut the ice cap down the centre in hopes to destroy Ice Crown and along with it the Frozen Throne. However, Maeve and Malfurion interrupted him once more. Illidan, shocked at the foolery of Malfurion, told him he was destroying the Lich King, an enemy to both sides. However, Malfurion had cut him off due to his belief that Tyrande was dead because of Illidan. With word that Tyrande wasn't dead, Illidan found her battling the undead, saving her and delivering her to Malfurion. Once more, Illidan agreed to a self-exile. After these events, Illidan forged a portal, fleeing from Azroth as fast as he could as he was pursued by Maeve. Because of his failure to defeat Nazul, he knew Kil'jaeden would hunt him down, so he attempted to go to Outland where he believed Kil'jaeden could not reach him. As he tried to run away on this world, Maeve captured him again and put him in prison. However, shortly after, he was saved by his alliance, comprising of Prince Kael'thas and Lady Vash, the Naga. Illidan accepted the Blood Elves and Kael'thas into his alliance, making him his right hand. He continued on his journey throughout land, ridding the world of demonic forces of the Legion, destroying any power Kil'jaeden had over it so that he could not hunt him down. The major step in this plan was the invasion of the Black Temple, where he could imprison the current leader of Outland, Magtheridon, closing his portals and using it as his own fortress. Within the Black Temple, the enslaved Broken and their leader, Akama, came to Illidan in hopes of pledging allegiance. They felt a sense of debt towards him because he had slain their master and defeated the Felorgs of Magtheridon. Illidan gathered his new forces together as strength for his crusade. However, in a dark cloud, Kil'jaeden emerged, scolding Illidan for his attempts to escape his grasp. However, Illidan laid claim that he had gathered an army to attack the Frozen Throne once more. Kil'jaeden saw some promise in Illidan's forces and agreed to grant him one more chance. Illidan and his forces would journey to Northrend, slaying the bug army of Nubarak. They laid siege to Ice Crown. As he sensed danger and his possible defeat, Nazul, the Lich King, called Arthas for help. As Illidan stormed Ice Crown, Arthas and Anubarak led the fight to his forces. At the end of the battle, Arthas gained access to the Frozen Throne, clashing weapons with Illidan. Arthas eventually overpowered Illidan, injuring him and leaving him in the snow. His allies retreated, taking Illidan with him as Arthas awaited his destiny as the Lich King. Akama, the broken leader, realised he exchanged one demonic master for another and conspired with Maeve to imprison him once more. Atop the heights of the Black Temple, Azeroth's heroes and Akama fought Illidan, bringing him to his knees. Maeve enters through a portal, imprisoning him once more. After his defeat, Illidan's Illidari forces were broken apart and imprisoned with their master, taken back to the Vault of the Wardens so they could lay in eternal imprisonment. During his conquest to bring Sargeras into the world, the alternate Draenor reality Gul'dan seeked out and eventually found Illidan. He set Illidan free, hoping to use his body as a font of power to bring his master into the world. Illidan's body was taken to Blackrook Hold, a place in which Gul'dan would start a ritual for separation of his soul and body, sending his soul into the Twisting Nether. This caused Zera, the prime of the Naru, to seek him out as the prophecy foretold of Illidan being a child of the light and shadow, and the one to put an end to the demons. Illidan, contacted by his Eladari, told them to obtain the Sargorite Keystone, a tablet or skeleton key of sorts, to the Legion's worlds. Zera and the Illidari demon hunters seek to return Illidan's soul to his body before Gul'dan could complete his ritual. They transferred his soul to a prison, storing it long enough to transfer him inside, but his soul had been transferred into Helheim, the hell world of the Valkyr. The ruler of this realm, Helia, had kept and stored the soul for Gul'dan, and upon her defeat, it was put back into the soul prism and taken to Light's heart, and taken to Khadgar, who would call on its power when Gul'dan attempted to open the portal for Sargeras as a way to bring Illidan's soul to his body. As Khadgar attempted this feat, Sargeras had already filled Illidan's body, awakening him as a spirit which was defeated. After this, Illidan took control of his body once more, grabbing Gul'dan and shattering him into nothing, with only a skull remaining, crushing it. On the broken shore, during the second battle, Illidan worked along with Maeve, 
to journey atop the Cathedral of Eternal Night, using the Aegis of Agrimor, one of the pillars of creation. They defeated the Nathrazine Mephistroth and activated the Aegis. An echo of the spirit of Agewin, once a guardian like Khadgar, tells that the pillar of creation can restore the worlds she has placed. During a fight between the awakened Avatar of Sargeras, also known as the Fallen Avatar, Illidan, along with Khadgar and Velen, would face Kil'jaeden the Deceiver. Kil'jaeden eventually retreated, running to his Legion flagship, however he was followed by Velen. They followed Kil'jaeden into the Twisting Nether, the only place to truly put an end to a demon. After his defeat, Kil'jaeden's ship plummeted into the planet Argus. Illidan used the Sargerite Keystone, his Eldaria taken to his advantage, creating a rift that allowed Khadgar to teleport them back to Azeroth. However, due to this process, Argus was made visible in Azeroth's orbit. Illidan later journeyed to the Exodar, located on Azure Mist Isle, so he could board the Vindicar, a Draenei interdimensional ship, to journey to Argus. He talked to Velen questioning his faith and how he had led his people to be corrupted by Sargeras and lost his world. Upon his arrival above Crocoon, the Alliance's outpost region, he questioned the presence of the Army of Light, who could not be found. Then the Xenadar appeared, another Draenei dimensional ship belonging to them, however the Legion shot it down, setting the course for the final battle on the planet. Illidan would slay Ante and Lightbreaker, the one who had shot down their ship. Zera, who had been restored by Illyria and Torellian, was adamant about completing the destiny of Illidan, the Light's child. However, within her embrace, Illidan rejected it, exclaiming he traded his freedom for such power before. The argument ended in an immense projection of power through an eye beam from Illidan, killing the Noru. Torellian shouted, crying out about Illidan's betrayal, attempting to put an end to him. Illidan blocked the sword with his bare hand telling him that faith had blinded him, and there was no such thing as a chosen one, but only the fate of themselves. Illidan foretold of destroying the Legion's war machines so they, they would not be overrun as they pushed to the core of the planet to lay siege to Antorus, the Burning Throne. After the killing of King Garoth, Illidan said that the Legion is close to its end, and that the return to the Vindicar was the best course of action. In the centre of the Legion's font of power, Antorus, the Coven of Shivara, a twisted coven of demons, twist and torture the minds of the Titan Pantheon, using the might of their spirits to serve the Legion. Illidan explained that if the spirits are to subdue and be used, Sargeras would use the power to lay his claim to Azeroth itself, the final Titan world soul. They discovered Titan Agamemnon's soul is also corrupted, and he is used by Sargeras to fight off the enemy forces before he is defeated. His soul returned to the rest of the Pantheon. As Sargeras uses the Titan soul of the planet Argus, Illidan claims he has power to fuel an infinite army. The heroes battle in a last-ditched effort to end Argus the Unmaker, the Titan world soul. The heroes return back to Azeroth in time for the Pantheon to gather their strength in preparation to imprison Sargeras. Illidan chooses to stay behind to end his mission and fulfil his destiny as Sargeras' hunter and jailer. As Sargeras enters the world in a last effort to cause destruction, he summons his sword, striking it into the planet Azeroth below, wounding it as his sword dives into Silithus and he is pulled away by the Pantheon and imprisoned at the seat of the Pantheon with Illidan as his eternal jailer. If you enjoyed this episode and want to learn more about your favourite characters, you can check out the other lore videos on the channel. Subscribe for more lore episodes and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single video. Thanks for watching.